We only got one left, Jerry. You ready? Yeah. This is not another classic SCP, is it? Uh, no, it's 3471. Hold on. I need to make sure they actually okay. get the, the right nickname. Paint under its actual nickname is Paint Under the Bridge, but they called it if it if he sees you, it's already too late. Oh. But its actual nickname is Paint Under the Bridge. May I read it? Sure. Oh look, they even have the bridge. Yes, it looks very nice. Looks like any other normal bridge you'd see in a small town. Yep. Item SCP-3471 Class Safe. Special Containment Procedure. Due to its close proximity to civilized say, um, to civilian populations, a covert perimeter around SCP-3471 is to be upheld at all times by a minimum of three security personnel under the guise of historical landmark restoration of efforts, the individuals attempting to enter the site without authorization from personnel with level two or higher clearance are to be apprehended. Paintings received from SCP-3471-1 manifestations are to be kept in object storage lockers 4352 through 4355. Description. SCP-3471 is a cast iron tramway bridge across the river can't the river Sinan between Trainan and Robertson, Wales. Oh, it's in Wales. <laughs> the bridge, constructed in 1811, supports 11.2 meter long deck oh Supports a. That's a weird way to put it. <laughs> Constructed in 1811, supports an 11.2 meter long deck composed of several iron plates, each measuring approximately three meters wide. Alongside the absence of wear and tear expected from its age, SCP-3471's iron brackets and trussled support beams display no signs of excessive rust or external damage, appearing to be a well-maintained despite its limited support, civilian presence before containment. It is unclear exactly when SCP-3471 began to showcase anomalous properties, so the earliest reports of manifestations date back to 1950 redacted. 50 redacted years following the closure of the tramway. Should any individual attempt to cross 3471, beginning from either side, SCP-3471 will manifest near the center deck, generally peering over the bridge railing. SCP-3471 one dash one appears to be an elderly Caucasian man standing approximately 1.8 meters in height and wearing tattered archer clothing. SCP-3471-1 also displays mannerisms and attributes akin to those affected by significant hearing loss. Speaking only through sign language and being aware of sounds made in its vicinity. In each manifestation, 3471-1 is accompanied by standard a standard painting easel, canvas, and a duffel bag. Notably, the aforementioned yet displayed any anomalous properties, all of which materialize near SCP-3471-1 person, though displaying distinct distinguishable facial and bodily features attempts to connect 3471-1 to any known individual through facial recognition techniques or similar methods have been successful. Notice, so, uh, notably, SCP-3471-1 
Smith's materialization position is out of the field view of any individuals present. However, viewing the position through means does not prevent SCP-3471-1 manifestation. Due to SCP-3471-1's 1 apparent hearing loss, subject crossing SCP-3471 are capable of passing SCP-3471-1 without incident, leading to SCP-3471-1's de dematerialization once the end of the deck. Should the crossing individual interaction 3471 initially responds very uh, initially responds variably, most commonly acknowledging the subject's presence with a greeting and the interaction continue can continue comparatively to a typical conversation depending on the subject's sign language comprehension. Otherwise, SCP-3471-1 will attempt to relay information through the features and expression. Throughout the interaction, 3471-1, the subject is standing in its point of manifestation, making sure to keep the individual from moving from position. If the subject complies with coercions, SCP-3471-1 will step back to easel and canvas, proceeding to withdraw acrylic paints, air, uh, no, acrylic paints, paint brushes, and similar implements from within the accompanying duffel. Three four seven one dash one will paint the subject through differing depictions with each individual. This painting process continues for a varying amount of time lasting on average 15 or 24 minutes, and painting produced by SCP-3471-1 showcase characteristics of impressionism art movement. Once the artwork is presumably completed, 3471-1 will back of the painted canvas with a charcoal pencil. The individual receiving the painting the painting tends to interpret the message as related to the impactful events they've experienced. The message is written in the language really by the it, What? It God damn it, OBS. What happened? It did a, a, a fight it did one second disconnection and reconnection. I cut you, you off before no, you're you're good. It, I cut you off the second it disconnected. Oh. Yeah, I was quick. Okay. God damn it, OBS. There may actually you be a tell storm. Me when I can read again. Yeah, you can read now. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. With little to no consequence. Expressing disappointment or understanding. In both cases, once the subject completely crosses SCP 3471, SCP 3471 1 will dematerialize. This SCP was discovered at uh, December 27, 1950, redacted. Following rumors about through trade. Tracy Driscoll. Should I just look up how the fuck you say that? If you want to. Tracy Non? I, I don't know how to. Regarding the benevolent spirit of a painter, huh? Town locals provided several possible identities for SCP 3471 1. Include the impressionist painter, Harriet. Redacted, the deceased town local Dewey redacted, and a Celtic water spirit. These possible identities are still on further questioning. Lo town locals referred to it as Highwell. 
redacted, who presumably had interacted. Oh. <laughs> Town locals refer to a eyewitness. Had... 3471-1, the most frequently compared to other residents. Prior to SEP 3471's discovery, Highwell Redacted had succumbed to congestive heart failure, dying in his home on November 9th, 1950 Redacted. Testing Log 3471-231. Subject D5681. Brief background. Shot in the lower abdomen. D class five six eight one was unable to affect three four seven one dash one lead. The painting received depicts D class five six eight one on SCP three four seven one leaning on the railing with his left hand pressed against his abdomen. Message. The world has a funny way of putting things into balance through unpredictable means. Just remember that every action will bring a formidable reaction, no matter how small or significant that action may be. Okay, that's a little dark. Yeah. Basically, you deserve to get shot. Is that okay? All right, now a test would be class 4903. Their brief background is escaped from a sinking cruise ship equipped with a pen and notepad. The class 4903 was able to more effectively communicate with 3471-1. Despite this, 3471-1 seemingly limited interaction quickly gesturing D class 4903 towards its manifestation position. Notably, the dash one appeared tense, displaying nervous mannerisms. The painting received depicts the D class on the riverbank with feet submerged and SCP 3471 displayed in the background. Message reads Upon water's edge, you find place to teeter for even. Teeter, for even though you are safely planted with your hands in the dirt, you are ever reminded of how easily it fall in. Simply remember to stand back when the water rises. Is that them saying be careful? Yep. Less dark than the first one. The next one is D class 5172. Their daughter was born during his life sentence, equipped with a pen, notepad, and interview questions. Uh, that's dark. Results with a notepad and pen, the D class was able to communicate with SCP 471 1. No relevant information regarding was ascertained from 3471-1 with it once again attempting to limit interaction. The painting received depicts uh, the D class on SCP-3471 with a child resting on his shoulders. Message reads, children are a precious thing of pure innocence and truth, but one cannot always be there for them. Do not be saddened. But more importantly, a wondrous world given the chance to live. That's actually very sweet. Yeah. No, perhaps SCP 3471 perfectly posed by the D class due to their more antagonistic background. I wouldn't blame it. In any case, I'm calling for a few volunteers from the research staff to participate in coming in the coming tests. From what we've gathered so far, I doubt any of you would be in it. 
in harm's way. So I better start seeing names on the list. Dr. Cobton, Dr. Cobton, I think. The subject is researcher Ellen. Brief background. Their father was killed in the double side of Clinton, notepad, and interview. Upon awareness of researcher Masone's presence, SCP-3471-1 displayed more relaxed mannerism wherein it attempted to elongate the interaction and Limited information was garnered regarding the interview question. However, Dash One attempted to divert the line of conversations towards stories concerning other individuals that have crossed SCP-3471. The painting received depicts researcher Masone on SCP-3471 peering the water with an older man standing next to questions. Message reads, death is part of life, coming in many forms and leaving tragedy in its way. It is not an end. Though the departed may be gone, their memory still lives on, making them immortal beyond measure. So far, this isn't a harmful SCP. It's more kind. <laughs> it is. No, we're getting it to talk, that's for sure, but it doesn't seem to be entirely comfortable. Forrest Ben, since you know sign language, participate tests, perhaps throughout the more direct communication, it will be more compelled to share information. Dr. Cobden. Next subject is researcher Piers Ben. I have no idea the gender of any of the researchers besides the first one. Brief mm -hmm. background suggests that the not survived SCP redacted breaches from containment is able to provide interview questions. Are you unable to talk in yes, interaction sir. with an aggressive SCP? <laughs> Why isn't this doctor volunteering for this? I want to see that. What, Dr. Coulton? <laughs> yeah, that's what Bookham said. <laughs> Well, Copeton probably doesn't know sign language like Horseman does. Mm -hmm. All right. As, research yeah. As researcher Horseman approached SCP-47, SCP-3471-1 did not manifest. Instead, a duffel bag, presumably the same duffel, I mean the same bag associated with with uh, SCP-3471-1 materialized. Upon further inspection, the bag was found containing painting implements and a leather bound. Researcher Horseman attempted to recover the bag 3471, but upon reaching the end of the deck, the bag, excluding the, the journal, dematerialized. Dash ones failed, uh, dash one failed to materialize with a three week period. After which it continued to mature. Expected attempt to garner information from 3471 1 regarding the absence of the journal have thus far resulted in failure. I don't think they want to talk. Yeah. Following the test, 3471 231 05, a leather on SCP-3471, irrelevant entries have been included. So now we're reading the journal. Do you want me to read the journal since they're long? Okay. I can do that. J just try to do it in the thoughts of an old man. In an old man? Well... That's what the SCP looks like, right? Yes, alright. <clears throat> September 19th, 15th, That's strange to be back here again, to be honest. Never thought I'd see this house again. Of course, my sister had to bring this place up with the doctor. Quiet and peaceful and full of memories I want to forget. 
she is right, though, whether I agree with her or not. There's a boss we call it here later in the week. Think. Keep an eye on me and make sure I don't die in the middle of the night. <clears throat> the, the, the things a heart problem that will bring upon you. Still, I have a few days before she gets her mothery hats all over me. She's always been that kind of person for better or worse. But enough on the future. Something unexpected it did happen today. Otherwise, this entry would rather or would be rather pointless. I decided to take a walk, breathing in the air, getting all the memories to flow in and now instead of later. On this walk, I came up to that old bridge where the trams used to run when this place had some impact on the rest of the world. There was this, oh. there was this old man out on the bridge, looking over the railings. I suddenly do not know the age. It's fine. I'll, I'll say keep it with the voice. He seemed like one of the wistful types, taking in nature and being at peace with the world and all of that. I'm not quite sure what came over me, but I felt like striking up a conversation with this complete stranger. And I must say, I wasn't very successful. I think the man's death was extremely hard of him, and the fool only realized that I was there when I tapped his shoulder. He does seem nice enough, however. Gave a smile, shook my hand firmly, and got a, a good, uncomfortable look at my face. He tried talking to me in signs, but I don't know any of it. I'm sure he realized that rather quickly. Still, though, it wasn't much of a conversation. It was interesting. Next time I take a walk... I should probably bring a notepad and pen just in case. 18 September 19th of a death. It hasn't even been an entire day and I've already had a nightmare. I knew eventually they would start, but I did not expect them to occur the night of my arrival. They were quite terrible as well. Visceral, even. Like enough, I could hardly breathe. If they persist, Mar will ever take her eyes off me. And this place will truly become a living hell. If only none of it ever happened, perhaps then I'd be able to bear myself. I did do more than wallow in self-pity, however. Surprisingly, most of the food left in the pantry is still decent, if not partially stale. I was able to make myself some breakfast that was fine enough to eat. I'm sure my sister will be bringing some groceries when she arrives. Hand-picked commodities won't have me gripping at my chest the moment I swallow. I know that shoot make sure of that. Finishing breakfast, I decided to take a morning walk like I did yesterday. Make made sure to bring a notepad like I suggested, and it proved to be a smart investment. The old fool was on the, out on the bridge again. This time he brought himself an easel and a whole bag's worth of whatever pet and supplies you could think of. To be honest, I'm surprised someone of his age was able to carry it at all. 
kid was just silently patting a rubber bang. And I would assume he's had had practice since what he had done so far was fairly decent. At the very least, you could tell what he was paying. This time, he noticed me coming up, and again, he greeted me in much the same way he did before. Shaking hands and an uncomfortable looks and whatnot. What deviated from before, however, was what we were actually able to communicate. I would write down a few words on the notepad and could write some more, and lines of thought were conveyed. He didn't give me a name, despite my asking, but he delved into other things. Apparently, he's traveled the world searching for simple spots to paint. The fool told me, however, that's not the landscape he comes for. And no, he didn't relinquish that information either. But I must complain, really. I don't know the man. Yet he has that sort of charm. That time that keeps you invested, even though written conversations, he's old. So he's bound to have a few stories to tell. Something to get me entertained, at least. 21st September, 1950, Redacted. Mari arrived today. Birthday. First day she does when she walks through the front door was asking whether or not I've been taking my medication. I swear the woman does not trust me to take care of myself. Still, she means well. I'll give her that much. She was sounding on to me though when I mentioned my daily walks. Apparently, walking or any continuous physical activity whatsoever is not exactly the best thing for me. Especially if I'm doing it alone. She went on it about how my heart won't be able to pump enough blood to keep me standing or how my legs will start to swell. Binding me to a wheelchair. There's also something she brought, by the way. Plan for the future as much as you want, but it doesn't make me feel any better that you're expecting me to need a wheelchair. Might as well have smashed my diggity with a hammer and have thrown the pieces out the window to be pecked at by the birds. In other news, I saw that old fool on the bridge. Actually, I don't think I've written down anything he told me so far. I had him convey a few stories of his globe riding adventure through the notepad. I won't write them all here in this entry, but might as well describe at least one. Actually, I'll just attach the page he wrote it all on, and here it is. I remember a few years back. When I was in Moscow, there was this point where the pavement bridged over a lower road, and you could barely see St. Basil's over the rooftops. In the evenings, the sun would just peer over the orthodox spires, letting down sifflers of white through the clouds that would dance with the snow as it fell. A perfect place to paint, and I met a lot of people too. All of them with their stories to tell. There was this older woman dressed up in furs that had left a former lover when she was younger, and she regretted every day since. You see, in a strange way that she herself did not fully understand, she had truly loved the man. The sorrow plagued her eyes, giving it so easily little way. She had stopped to look at myself painting the rooftops as she did the man sh she left walked on the road and underneath. To her dismay, however, his arms were wrapped around another. He had moved on while she had not. He gave up on the rooftops and started painting her then. And I feel, in some sense, that seeing that man again gave her the chance to put the regret behind her. There was a wondrous spot indeed. And I'll never forget it. 
Honestly, I don't believe all of it. How the hell would the fool have known what any of the people he met were about if he could hear a thing they said? But whereas he wasn't deaf then, I don't know. Still a nice anecdote or more reminiscent, I suppose. Even if it isn't all true. 30, 31st of September, 1950, redacted. The nightmares are still running rampant. You have to wonder why your brain will make your face terrible situations during a time when you're supposed to be arrested in Trainfield. It only seems counterproductive, or maybe the mind is just too good at making things up. And no, I'm not going to write out all the regret that's burning within me for what happened here. It won't do anything anyway, so there's no point in trying. Also, probably more pressing matter, my legs start have started to swell. Mari had a talk with the doctor before she came here, and the swelling was expected. Apparently, that's why she brought the wheelchair. It could get worse before it gets better. I don't need it yet, and that's not the bride talking. Now I must admit, getting up is steadily becoming more difficult. Either way, I was able to slip out. My sister went into town to get a few things, giving me ample time to have a walk. Of course, I went out to the bridge and once again the old fool was there painting his heart out. He wanted to paint me though. Out of all things, I declined of course. But I must admit that the jester was flattering, to say the least. I was able to get another story out of him, but not much else. I suppose he's just a very private on certain matters, and it's not my place to pry. Right. I have been to France before, but it was a long time ago. In fact, I used to have a residence in Paris. But it was more of a summer home on the outskirts of the city. In any case, I remember I once went to Normandy. In particular, I was in Bayeux. There was a spot in its medieval center in the corner of an intersection where half timbered houses funneled down towards a cobblestone plaza. It was positioned just perfectly to where on certain nights the moon would rise aligned with the plaza. There was this younger man with curly brown hair and a longer face. He would ride past me every morning and ride in every evening on his bicycle. Except on Sundays. You see if he had a passion or something of the sort. He would go to the cathedral cemetery and etch tombstones and plaques onto paper like in for the more offset graves that stood alone when he could. Then with etchings and tow, he came to the town's hall and library and searched for the records of the person whose tool zone he copied. He found out who they were, what they did, and what they were like, what they accomplished, and what they left behind. I went inside he had a reason for participating in this hobby, or his, or his nor would I say, he needed one. It was dedicated and through it he found fulfillment. It was not necessary a pointless task that I found made his actions that much more enthralling. Act 6 of October 1950 redacted. I admit it's getting much out of the lot now. It's not just a swollen legs, no, they play great. Part in it. I'm becoming short of breath, and I can feel my heart racing as I move about. You're just becoming far too tiring. And as much as I don't care to say it, the wheelchair is slowly becoming more appealing option. Still, I don't think I'm there quite yet. But anything can happen, I suppose. My sister, on the other hand, has not been able to take lives off me lately. 
It's not that I don't appreciate what she's doing, but I think she's starting to take it a little too far. She's controlling my diet to a D, making sure not a speck of salt happens to find its way sprinkled into my soup. In fact, it's only soup that she's been forcing me to eat along with a few sandwiches here and there. If she weren't my sister, I'd tell her to bugger off, but I can't have. I was able to sneak out again, however, to participate in the walks that I, for some reason, desperately crave. To be honest, I simply find it a soothing activity. And nature, I find it easier to lose myself in thought, and lost in thought is a very pleasant state of being. Besides, I've got to enjoy my legs while I can. And yes, I did happen to find my way back to that tramway and bridge. It's not that I tended to go there every time I take a stroll, but it just becomes part of the route, I suppose. Anyway, the old man was there painting again. I'm not sure whether he's been hit the same thing and simply just started over. Who knows how many times. Or if he's a perfectionist. He wanted to paint me again last... Like last time I declined, though I felt bad about it. He seems rather sincere if I'm reading his expressions correctly. But he's far too polite to state the fact. Either way, we still converse. Really, I admit to it. And he listened. But I could tell he was taking it in. Really listening. Well, written in this case. He is the type who cares no matter who you are. At least that's what I'm taking from him. Actually, I find it rather ironic. He's one of the few people who truly listen. Being there is the person you can simply talk to. The fool can't hear a thing. October, uh, 17th of October, 9th and 5th of October. It's official. I can no longer walk. When I was younger, I dreaded old age, especially when we visit my great-grandfather out near Monmouth. He couldn't walk two steps unless he was gripping onto his crooked cane of his. When he was tired of walking, he would have to have my great-grandmother push him around on his wheelchair. I can still hear the wheels squeaking over the floorboards. He wasn't a bad man, my grandfather, but I had no intention of reaching age when walking became a chore more than anything. I'll admit, I was expecting age to be 34. Charming, isn't it? At any rate, I think I'm finally confined to this prison of mine. Unless my sister has decided to push me around the garden every day. I think I'll have to make do with the porch. You know, now that I'm stuck, my thoughts have been resting. Everything that I could ever think of has just been popping in my mind and leaving just as quickly as as if it's the roundabout round arc day triumph. I swear I solved more world problems in my mind in a single day than humanity in the centuries it has to do that for itself. However, it's the strangest thing no matter what tangent I seem to go off on, I keep coming back to that fool on the bridge. I do not know why, and before you get any ideas, the thoughts are nowhere near the questionable natures. He gave up on those tendencies when you, you know what happened. But that's the thing. Every time I think of the fool Painting the same scene over and over, doing nothing else with his day. I start to think about him. I suppose they're both similar. Private like to make themselves as mysterious as possible, plaid, sincere, and all those things. 
The only real differences I'd say are age and looks. Yet thinking on him just brings in regret. Regret and a lot of guilt. Actually, now that I've written this down, perhaps my condition is a punishment. You were bouncing out the many mistakes I've made. Getting back at me as it were. Who knows? But if that's the case, I'd say it's a fulfilling consequence, and I deserve no better. 26 October 1950 Redacted I haven't got much time to, to say, got much to say in this intro, really. Being bound to the wheelchair hardly brings out any intrigue to make the day more interesting. The only interest that I get is what I can think of. That and a few books have been lying around. I found one that I'm quite enjoying. Well, enjoying to laugh at. Starts out with a church on fire, but uh, with but a sole survivor that escapes the blaze I suspected. An arsonist on the loose who has a backward way of looking at religion. A deputy that's in too far over his head. Apparently it's based off of real events. But I hardly find that believable. In any case, I realize I've neglected to convey one of my anecdotes that the old fool wrote out for me during one of our conversations. It's oddly important, but I really don't have anywhere else to put the paper where he wrote it out on. Either way, it's something. Otherwise, this intro would be all about how be all about how incompetently incom written that book is. Now nah, that was far too much to write down in a single entry. My days ago as a goal, I found myself wandering the books tr trickling down the Rocky Mountains near Montana. Of course, I'm referring to the United States. I've always been a friend of nature, and hiking was a hobby of mine. When I was a younger man, you must give the state's credit work for it to do. The wilderness where it stands is a sight to behold. While I was there, I came across a peculiar but interesting spot. It was a clearing amidst pine trees a bit further off the beaten path. I intended to go, but I knew I made the right choice. If I stayed fairly still, a deer or an elk would creep out from the trees, coming to bask in the sun as the pine canopy. Hardly that, but a sliver of light through. They made excellent subjects for my paintings, but they weren't the reason why I picked that spot. Nearby, a group of people were huddled up in something not bigger than a shipping container. You see, you see there, were, there were researchers of sorts studying a peculiar natural phenomenon that I, myself, didn't ever to get a look at. They had been sent there, and they had no closer to figuring out than they did when I sought it. Then one night, one of them disappeared, when I shot out the trace. There was a middle-aged man older than me at the time, and they searched for him to no avail. They only found his cracked pocket watch under the overturned stone. There's something terrible happened to that man. That's always a possibility. Though, I come to think that perhaps he didn't want to be found. After all, the institute he's researched for was far too cold and systematic for his liking. The thing the fool may have gotten caught up in some secret government research operation and didn't even realize it. Write that into a book, it would sell a lot better than what I'm reading. 8th of November, 1950, Redact, final entry. I was going to have that old fool paint me today. Well, I did in a way. Got Mary to push me out to the bridge and everything. Thing is, he wasn't there. I don't know what I was expecting, really. Mary can't be there, but there, surely. To be honest, though, I was more looking forward to the distraction. However, like I mentioned, I didn't leave empty handed. On the ground where he usually has his essel set, there was a canvas wrapped up in his wax paper and tied off with some cheap looking string. 
a little note written in the man's handwriting bearing my name was attached. Now that I think about it, I don't recall giving him my name since he never gave me his. Strange, in any case, I would have torn through the paper then and there, but Mari insisted on doing it back at the house. I don't know why, but I didn't have the energy to argue. Back to the house we went, my sister left me to my own devices out in the garden, as she went to fix some sandwiches and tea. As I was alone, it seemed like the perfect time to get a look at whatever I got from the bridge. Turns out it was a painting like I expected. Thing is, it was painted of me riding a bike out on a trailway. It was enough to get me the chuckle, but not in a bad way. Far from it. But while I was putting it down, I noticed something was written on the back of the canvas in what appeared to be chuckle. It does not matter if others forgive you, if you can't forgive yourself. It will be painful at first, and the scars will show, but then you can start to living again. I don't know. It's probably some advice he ripped out of himself out now or something. But it's almost as if he knows. I generally believe that. I regretted that day for so long, but you know what? I think I'm ready to move on. That's right. I'm ready to put it behind me. Or attempt to at least. With these words, the regret and the guilt are never the, again to plague my thoughts. And I'll be able to live on my number days, building a peace with what I'll be leaving behind. If only for that simple. That's it. It wasn't the SCP's journal felt like it said a lot about the SCP. God damn it. What? I saw the thumbnail when I opened up an OBS. Oh, what is it? Uh... This is a kind SCP! He helped people! <laughs> Four. Yeah, I already did. Why are they demonizing the disabled person? I don't know. I can't even check if this is the actual writer or not. This is a nice painter. Don't make him a sadistic. Alright, re you ready for the final SP tonight? He had crossed the bridge many times in earlier years, before he had needed the use of the wheelchair. It wasn't on every occasion, but oftentimes he'd see the old man painting on the bridge. Until recently, when his illness had become more severe, he'd never given the man much thought. However, he felt his time was growing short now, and the thought of the old painter somehow comforted him. Yeah. As he reached the far end of the bridge, the old man was nowhere to be found. What did he expect it after all? He couldn't be out here all the time. He got rid of the sister. The short excursion had already tired out his failing heart. Oh, yeah. As he turned his chair round, he saw the old man smiling at him. Wait. Easel already set up and brushes in hand. Well, <laughs> you popped up out of nowhere, didn't you? Yeah, the you old man nodded and just joined Discord very quickly. What was that? Can you leave and rejoin Discord, the Discord chat very quickly? Okay. Sorry, uh, it just kept cutting you off. And uh, I was starting to get a little tired of it. That's fair. And I know it's Discord, not your connection. Yeah. Alright, we ready? Yeah. Gestured for him to come nearer. Today's the day, then. Didn't a portrait, if you would, good sir. That moment? What was that? Didn't he not run into the painter that time? No, he didn't. And he always brought a notebook to communicate with them? Yep. Because he's deaf. Or yeah. close to it. He's deaf. The view so, 
He, he can't hear or understand what anyone says. Yep. He was scenic in this part of Wales. He'd never get tired of it. He wished he could speak with the old man, but he didn't know sign language and had what? remembered his notepad today. With the final stroke, the painter was done. He wrapped the painting in paper. As he did so, he wrote something on the back before presenting it to the man in the wheelchair. Thank you. I look forward to seeing him once I reach home. Until we meet again, sir. <laughs> Personality of that guy completely. Yep. He sat in the garden, the painting on his lap. He peeled off the paper to reveal a portrait today, of himself so... on the. Was it? But they also changed his, his age though. So. Ah, uh, yeah. Bridge, riding a bicycle. He had a good chuckle to himself. Those days were long gone, but the memory hadn't faded. He turned over the painting and read what the old man had written. It does not matter if That's others forgive you powerful. if you can't forgive yeah. yourself. It will be painful at first and the scars will show, but then you can start living again. <laughs> November 8th, 1955. He took a deep breath. He couldn't explain it, but somehow he had carried the guilt from an accident in his past for a long time now. Maybe it was time to let it go. He decided on the spot that no longer would the regret and guilt plague him. He would live out his remaining days at peace with himself. Yeah. So, the painter sees your past? Your regrets or mistakes, I believe. And the painting? The words in the back? Closure. It allows you to move on from the trauma. And then, he kills you. No, I don't think so. Simple, simple Chen. More like, what? gives you peace. In this case, the man was already very sick. His time was close. Perhaps the guilt and regret were the last things keeping him tethered to this bookworm. world. What? He found his closure. Thank you, Pythia. This just came in from the Welsh Division. What so the our fact? painter is absolving murderers now? Perhaps? On the back of the painting it reads, <clears throat> The world has a funny way of putting things into balance through unpredictable means. Children are a precious thing of pure innocence and truth, but one cannot always be there for them. The remainder of the text was too are blurry to be legible. I like that. It's class test? Yes. So I didn't even have him die yet. Time yeah. will bring some balance to her situation. The flight had been long, but both had managed to get some sleep. Where do we start? Let's go straight to the source, the painter. As they approached the bridge, it appeared abandoned. No sign of any painter or an easel a few plain-clothed guards stood the perimeter, containing the SCP. Klaus turned to look back in the direction they had come. Whoa! Even though I knew that was supposed to happen, it, it still kind of creeps me out. You're telling me, guys appearing out of thin air isn't something you ever get used to. They approached the man. Hello, I'm Klaus. <laughs> oh, wait. Klaus and Chen have some histories, so if Klaus gets their painting done, is it gonna show Klaus and, and Chen? <laughs> Maybe it will. And this is Agent Chen. Whatever he does, so long as it doesn't uh, involve a German party member. Yeah, oh yeah, Nerder was a defense too. Yeah, it was too. The old That's man true. smiled and gestured for them to stand before him. Um, thank you, but we are in a bit of a rush. We just want to ask you some questions. Just guy, maybe you'll hear me. The old man gestured once again for them to stand also before him. Listen, we love art, and artists and stuff. Picasso, Da Vinci... ...a better font for charcoal than what they use. Yeah. Island boys, you name it. But we just don't have the time for a self-portrait right now. Can you tell us who this is? Klaus showed the man the picture. 
He frowned and gestured once again to the space in front of his easel. This is going nowhere. Let's show this picture around the town and see if anyone recognizes her. What? Who are the what? This is not the this is the RCP! Yeah, what the heck? Well, we're getting nowhere in a hurry. Nobody seems to recognize her. Yeah, looks like we'll need to try something else. Hang on a second. He pulled the phone out and took another look at the picture. What if... If? W what if she isn't harming that baby? There's blood on the scissors, on her hands. Kumhak ergo propterhak. Ego props to who? Uh, with this, therefore, because of this, we see the baby, we see the scissors and the blood. That doesn't mean she killed the baby. Correlation does not imply causation. Uh, come with me. They returned to the bridge. The old painter was there, waiting for them with a smile on his face. I think I. Does that mean they murdered the baby? I guess. I don't know. I get it. The painter merely smiled back and pointed to the space before him. Fine, fine. But if I stand there, you better be ready to answer some questions. He politely nodded as Chen took his place in front of him. You know this girl, don't you? What you wrote here on the world finding balance and that children are precious even if you can't be with them, that wasn't Wait, about that, that murder, was, was that it? That line was towards a man, not a Oh my god. <laughs> this is zero percent already. <laughs> the old man looked back at Ploss with an astonished look on his face and shook his head. The scissors, the blood, the baby. She she had a miscarriage. But but the scissors why the scissors? Oh, what the, the old fuck? man pointed at his stomach with the brush in his hand. Of course. The umbilical cord. The scissors were to cut the umbilical cord. There was no crime here. Just a young woman's loss. But you spoke of the world restoring balance. What did you mean? The painter reached behind his bag and pulled forth another painting. In it, the same girl stood, but with a baby crying in her arms. He turned over the painting to reveal the same writing as the original, but the blurred words were clear and visible now. Do not be saddened, for more importantly, a wondrous soul has been brought into this world given the chance to live. So, she had another child. The old man smiled and nodded, what? then returned to his work. This doesn't sound like anything uh, you would A bit play. of a wasted trip, but worth it nonetheless. No, no trip is wasted if we can learn a little bit more about an SCP. And... Yeah. Peter paints chin and cost making out sloppy styles his book. Life, I guess. You're all heart, Doc. The painter waved his brush as he completed his work. He I lifted it off his easel. That's all right. I yeah. didn't know either. Yeah, me neither. You keep that one. You sure you don't want to have a little peek? Nah, I'm good. Just a teensy weensy little peek? I've got no regrets, Doc. Don't need to see whatever it is he's painted. <sighs> Fair enough. Thank you for your time. The old man set the painting down as the two walked away. Just remember that every action with will bring forth a formidable reaction no matter how small or significant that action may be. What the fuck? What? SCP-3471 is a cast iron tramway bridge in Robertstown, Wales. It is unclear exactly when 3471 began to showcase anomalous properties. Though the earliest reports of manifest... I don't 
don't know. That was for the D class who got shot. But what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah. Station, date back to 1950. Should any individual attempt to cross SCP-3471, 3471-1 will manifest near the center of the deck, generally peering over the bridge railing. 3471-1 appears to be an elderly Caucasian man, standing approximately 1.8 meters in height and wearing tattered articles of clothing. 3471-1 also displays mannerisms and attributes akin to those affected by significant hearing loss speaking only through sign language and being unaware of sounds made in its vicinity. In each manifestation, 3471-1 is accompanied by a standard painting easel, a canvas, and a duffel bag, all of which materialize near 3471-1's person. Notably, 3471-1 only manifests completely when its materialization position is out of the field of view of any individuals present. Throughout the interaction, 3471-1 will attempt to coax the subject into standing in its point of manifestation, making sure to keep the individual from moving from that position. If the subject complies with these coercions, 3471-1 will step back to the easel and canvas, proceeding to withdraw acrylic paints, paintbrushes, and similar implements from within the accompanying duffel bag. Following this, 3471-1 okay, will begin to paint the subject through differing depictions with each individual. Once the artwork is presumably completed, 3471-1 will write a message on the back of the painted canvas with a charcoal pencil. The individual receiving the painting tends to interpret the message as relating to impactful events they've experienced. 3471-1 will then proceed to secure the canvas with wax paper and string, and will attempt to give the completed painting to the subject. Guilt and tragedy are scars that last a lifetime, but like any scar, they heal slowly and hurt less as time progresses. Though they may never completely leave us, they will become bearable. Time heals all wounds. As always, what the fuck is that? And remember to subscribe, Why like, and share right if you would. And Bookworm says, I, "Out here, I'm hoping that the paint actually was a bit of drama depicted Shan and Klaus breaking up." Shan. Knows his love for class is dwindling, but poor class is either oblivious or resistant to it. I'm over here just making a whole fanfic of Chen and class in a relationship. I thought it was gonna be well, actually, it does make sense because Chen used to be a D class and shown in a previous video. Yeah, and Chen obviously never lost to their mother. but class says they did. So yeah. Chen acts like he doesn't have it. Yeah. All right. Remove of character slash license. Uh, literally oh. almost all of them in, in the name oh. of the article. All right. Added gore or violence. Four. <laughs> the TV's from the bottom of the article. <laughs> Four. Only men in the video slash offensiveness. Yeah. So you're saying another four? Do you agree, Bookworm? Also, I feel like it was super sexist and insensitive what they did with the woman they did add. Like, yeah. what the hell is don't... It, it literally meant don't be sad over your dead baby. We're the sister for... <laughs> yep, four. All right. Uh, zero percent for the end. I like how you said, yeah, you finally got up to 40%. Zero, zero, zero. <laughs> what? Was I punished for making a god to... Did, did I curse us? Probably. 